everybody. I hope you all had a wonderful Halloween and thank you for joining me for yet another amazing live stream. What another amazing group of stories. I couldn't even include the Lupita Nyong'o news about A Quiet Place um, prequel. Uh, I'll try to cover that on tomorrow's stream. But wow, just what a group of stories. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, today is back to members only. Uh, if, I hope that you can become a member to comment, but if not, no worries. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, and I, yep, yeah, that's right. That's right, Ryan. I have all the graphics today. <laughs> I layered in as many graphics as possible, and there were a lot to include. Oh, Mark, your first live stream as a member. That's wonderful. Hey, Nathan, uh, welcome back. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Pretty, welcome. Thank you for joining. That's a very nice picture of you. I like your glasses. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tyler, welcome back. Uh, Leo says, if Joe is playing Wiccan, then they have to cast Kid as Hulkling. He looks, yes, we'll talk about that in a minute. JC, uh, GC, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad I got you out of bed, super extrovert. Hey, Jeff Smith, thanks for joining. So the way these live streams work, just as a refresher, hey, Aubrey, uh, that's a great name. Just as, oh, and thanks for joining Movie Club. Uh, just as a reminder, oh, hey, Jay, oh, look at all the people coming to party. Uh, welcome back, JLo. Welcome back, Antonio. Uh, so the way these live streams work is that you can comment and say anything you would like, please, about the story that we're discussing at that time. But then for the final 10 minutes of the stream, you can't ask me anything that you would like. So please save your quest or questions and comments that don't pertain to the story we're discussing for the final 10 minutes of the stream. Uh, hey, comic book Steve. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome back, Butterfly, your diamond status. And that's what that means on the bottom, how long you've been a member. Uh, all right, uh, nice to see you, Jim. Uh, all right, everyone, let's get started. Hold on, story number one. Oh, why's that move? Boop, darn it, here it goes. All right. All right, so my dreams have come true. <laughs> All fans' dreams have, well, many fans. I was surprised at some of the backlash to this casting announcement. We'll, we'll talk about that. Hey, Marlins. Uh, I do think, as Juan said, I think this is huge for Marvel LGBT fans. Absolutely huge. This character, if he is indeed Wiccan, and how could he not be? If Joe Locke is playing Wiccan, this character has the potential to be as popular as Wanda. Uh, and this would be absolutely huge for the LGBT community in terms of being portrayed in blockbusters. Uh, so far, supporting characters or, you know, not very much, you know, being a focus on the LGBT aspects of the character is minimized. You can't do that with Wiccan. Uh, his relationship with Hulkling is the whole thing. Hey, Omar. Hey, Logan. So it's a really big deal. And I can just tell you, it'll be a special experience for anyone in the theater when this character... Well, he's going to be on TV. Well, that's difficult. Well, that's too bad. But I think that to understand what this will mean to the LGBT community, to have such a powerful, cool main character, I mean, it's going to be just incredible. It's going to be probably the best LGBT representation we've ever had in a franchise. That's how incredible it is. It's just absolutely incredible. All right, so Joe Locke, if you're not familiar with Joe Locke, he is the co-star of uh, Heartstopper, an incredible show that took everybody, you know, it was a sleeper hit, but it took everybody by storm when it debuted on Netflix earlier this year. I watched it. It's very bingeable. I actually watched it. It's like half hour episodes. I watched it like in a day, maybe two days. It's an incredible, incredible show. We were just talking about it the other day. And there's a, we'll talk about Kit Connor in a second, but it's based on a comic book that was quite popular as well. And in the comic, the creator who makes the show actually for Netflix, she makes it herself. The comic book creator actually had them dress up as Hulk, Hulkling and Wiccan, the characters. And uh, there's a great shot of them having made out and having green uh, face paint all over each other. And it was very charming. It's a very wholesome show. Uh, I absolutely love Heartstopper. It's just incredible stuff. And everybody was like, there's Hulk, Hulkling and Wiccan. We found them. And I can tell you that Kit Connor, who's been having a very difficult week, Kit Connor has also been talking to Marvel. Uh, I don't know if it's an either or situation. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. I just, that's, you know, that's the tea. You know, that's the tea that I got. I can only serve the tea that I got. Hey, Alex. Uh, Hulkling is blonde, but I think that Kit could easily dye his hair. <laughs> 
But I think that Marvel might be working towards that. It would be weird to what it would do to Heartstopper. It would kind of like um, undercut that whole show, which has already been renewed for two more seasons. Uh, Heartstopper did pretty well in the ratings, but it is really tweeted about. It's a huge social media hit. It's like euphoria to a degree. The one moody guy, uh, some people are saying maybe he's playing Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's son. He's listed in the casting grid as playing the role of Tyler. Uh, Tyler uh, is, I think, just a pseudonym. Marvel is infamous for using fake names in their casting grids to try and throw off scoopers. Uh, so that's the, that's the situation. C-Live says, given the relative failure of LGBT films in the box office, are you worried that this will only widen the fan divide on Disney Plus shows? I don't think so, because Wiccan is so well done, and Wiccan is so powerful. He's uh, Wanda's son. He's literally a dividend of Wanda. Um, hey, cool guy. Uh, we'll talk about Ralph Boner in a second. Uh, no, he's, uh, but that's not, <laughs> that's not what it is. But I can't, I don't think that, he's definitely playing an LGBT character on the show. And I think it would be ridiculous to have Agatha's LGBT son, who nobody would want, instead of Wiccan. So I think that, you know, it's not 100% guaranteed, but uh, I think it, well, Evan Peters is maybe going to be returning, but not on Agatha Coven of Chaos. And Mephisto is also coming, and that unfortunately has been spoiled by some scoopers. I don't want to discuss that too much. But he's not Mephisto. We already have a Mephisto, and Mephisto will be appearing soon. So if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Kit Connor, he is the other individual there on the show. Um, Mexican Nachos is can the Hot Stopper leads be Hulkling and Wiccan? Is it too... Well, I don't know why it would be too Chris Pratt. I think it's perfect. It's not, I don't understand how it's at all like Chris Pratt. I mean, they are Hulkling and Wiccan. They already are. I mean, it's like ridiculous. But Kit Connor actually came out on social media yesterday as bi. Uh, and he was pretty upset about it uh, because he said that um, he did not want to do it. He feels he's young. It was a personal matter. And he feels that he was bullied by fans into revealing that information, which is really unfortunate. And he pointed out and said, um, you know, uh, you, you, if, if you bully me, he said, if you bullied him into coming out, you really didn't understand what Heartstopper was supposed to be about. And I would concur with that. So I felt very bad. I felt, um, I felt pretty bad about that. Uh, but I think being in Marvel would certainly make it up to him. Hey, uh, Raziel, thank you. Tanya, that's so kind of you to gift five memberships. That's very kind. Uh, so yes, so I think that, so that's, so we'll see what happens. Now, why were some people upset? Uh, now, I'm not upset, as you know. I have said this should be the case for a long time. Some of you said I willed it into existence, and I appreciate that. I, I really am so, I couldn't be more happy about this news. But some people, I saw some people feel they didn't think that he was attractive enough, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, I think that there are many things that make a person attractive. And I think that Joe Locke, if you watched Heartstopper, you would think that was a ridiculous comment. Welcome, Vicente. Uh, I think that he has all the charm and the appeal ever. He's just absolutely incredible. Now, uh, some also people said they felt that, uh, that they wanted more diversity in LGBT characters, and that it always happens to be cis white uh, actors and characters. Uh, I can understand your frustration, but Wiccan and Hulkling are not the characters to play around with. Wiccan and Hulkling need to be comics accurate. Uh, and I think that's really crucial because they're, they're already representing the LGBT community. Now, if you want uh, LGBT characters of color, why don't you go and bother Marvel about the fact that America Chavez, uh, Juan Hulkling is green, but when he chooses a human, he is, tends to be uh, Caucasian. Uh, they could change that. They could. But I think that I would, if I were Feige, I mean, look, we're going to talk about Wonder Man in a second, who he's already race bended. I think that if you're going to do Hulkling and Hulk, Wiccan and Hulkling, they need to be exact. They need to look like they left off, left off, left off of the comic book page. And Joe Locke and Kit Connor, to be honest with you, are satisfy that exactly. So it would be absolutely perfect. Again, it would kind of hurt the Heartstopper show, but I mean, how is that show going to stand in these actors' way? This would be just an incredible uh, career break for them. They would be, uh, and also because they're LGBT, um, uh, it's not just characters they're playing, but they both actually are LGBT. Uh, I think that, you know, that representation is very, very impressive. Uh, and I think that it, I think they would be 
I mean, it would define them for the rest of their lives, but that's awesome. I mean, we're talking characters, maybe not across the board, but within their fandoms, as big a deal as Wanda, Captain America, Iron Man. I mean, this would be really, really big. That's why I said it was so huge today. I mean, I just cannot, I cannot underscore this enough. It would mean so much to so many people. And when he shows up, when they show up in a movie, the audience, certain members of the audience at the very least, hey, Scarlet Witch, welcome, will go crazy. It'll be like the Nicole Kidman intro to the AMC uh, movie showings. You know, that famous picture of someone standing up and saluting her. I mean, it would just be a huge, huge deal. Uh, so as I said, it looks like Agatha, Coven of Chaos, is shaping up to be the children's crusade. Uh, you know, Agatha has a long history with the twins in the comics, so the whole thing makes sense. And I feel that there is a chance that uh, I told you that Wanda would show up at the very end of the show. Uh, and as Agatha, Coven of Chaos, comes more and more into focus, my T becomes more and more true. So uh, I'm very pleased about that. This, this, this scoop game is tough because a lot of times things that are considered don't, even though they were true once reported, don't come to fruition. And so uh, some people unfortunately don't understand that. Some of you do, which I, I think is really appreciated by myself and all scoopers, but this is just fantastic. And Zante says, we actually have representation among the LGBT characters. People just forgot about the female, forget about the female characters. In Marvel, you think, really? It's a very, very, very big deal. I'm very excited about it. And the fact that these characters won't just be there as friends or support staff, but will be very powerful leaders in the MCU. I mean, in some stories, Wiccan is even Sorcerer Supreme. It's a very big deal. Uh, and, and Hulkling goes on to become a ruler in the, you know, in the MCU cosmic. So it's really big. They're very powerful, important characters. And that's a big deal as to why I think their representation is so good. Robbie says, Wiccan helped me come out 10 years ago. I'm now 23. I never thought I'd see the day we'd be discussing his casting. I feel like Billy, mentally and physically, this to me is the perfect casting. That's a very touching story, Robbie. I'm so happy to see that that had a positive effect on your life and that now you can see um, it come into the live action space. It's really important. It's a really big deal. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited. All right, so that's the first story of the day. And so Wanda, she is the moment. Look at her, she, her even beyond Wanda, her, her whole life is spreading out amongst the MCU. All right. Uh, that's right, America Chavez, and also Valkyrie is a, pers a character of color too. That's another good point. That's an excellent point. All right, so second story of the day. Hold on one second. Boop. All right, speaking of Wanda... Uh, and also speaking of comics accurate, let's talk about the Wonder Man casting. Now, I told you a while ago uh, that Yahya Abdul, well, I tweeted that it was a DC character. And it is kind of weird that Black Manta is now a major character in the MCU. I don't know how they're going to coexist, but apparently they are. Uh, but I, I did tell you, um, a Loki is bisexual, uh, but at the, some, as one of you just pointed out, but they don't really do anything with that. Um, he's dating himself, but a female version of himself. Uh, Generation Marvel says, what about Captain Marvel or Valkyrie? Never, yeah, they never explored that. And I hear that, I hear that in the Marvels, Carol, Carol will be in a relationship that will not be LGBT, at least on the face of it. So, uh, but it's not, gonna, it's not a long-term relationship. Uh, so I don't know if they are going to pursue that, which would be unfortunate. All right. So anyway, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. Now, they race-bended this character. Uh, Nathan Fillion is someone that fans really wanted to play this role. Uh, Henry Cavill, I thought, would have been absolutely excellent. Uh, really a, a, a good choice. I think Henry Cavill, this is the role he should, quite frankly, have had. But he's not going to do it. He's trying to be Superman still. Uh, so anyway, um, they race-bended this character, and I think that Yahya Abdul-Mateen II was like, I don't really know if I want to go down this path because he already did Watchmen, and I believe he had a bit of a hard time with that, which is a shame because he did such a tremendous job in the role. But, uh, you know, it's difficult to do this kind of a role. Uh, you know, it's a, it puts you in a difficult space. Uh, so Yahya Abdul-Mateen II wasn't really feeling it. Uh, and then Marvel offered him more money, and he said, okay. I hear a similar thing might happen with Ryan Coogler for Secret Wars, where Ryan Coogler isn't really feeling directing it, but they might offer him more money, and then he might do it. <laughs> so I'm fine. I think these are great. This is good. I mean, I think considering the amount of grief that Yahya Abdul-Mateen is going to have to deal with on this, 
He should get paid. Get that bank. Good for him. Uh, hey, Katie lady. Also, I did hear as a little bit of an addendum to yesterday's discussion. Henry Cavill would have stuck it out with The Witcher if they'd paid him more money. But once they said not to pay him more money, he decided to follow his management's advice. So Henry Cavill's going to Henry Cavill. And I heard that a trade might cover this, which I would appreciate because it would back up what I've been saying. Um, but we'll see if any of them do. But yeah, so, so it's a combination of the movie star thing and wanting more money. Uh, and, but Netflix was like, we're not going to refuse to do it. But, you know, so it's, you have to decide what, you know, everybody hits that point where they're like, what's more valuable, you know, keeping you or, you know, having to pay that, that amount of money. So Wonder Man, uh, he's going to really need to connect with audiences. Wonder Man's going to really need to connect with audiences to be able to have fans be okay with creating a love triangle between Wanda and Vision. And if you don't do a love triangle between Wanda and Vision, what is the point of having Wonder Man around? You know, a lot of people have been saying, oh, Wonder Man's a character that's been around for a very long time. Well, yes, he was introduced a while ago. He was a major part of the West Coast Avengers team, which was a very Wanda Vision-centric team. And he's related directly to those characters. Uh, and then he went away for a really long time. And he's always around as, uh, as a romantic alternative for Wanda. Whenever he shows up, pretty much, that's what he's doing. He's a Wanda, you know, uh, he's, he's Wanda's friend with benefits, right? Uh, you know, Denzel, he basically, like, uh, you know, you know, like how Black Panther's new suit can take energy and, like, expel it? It's kind of similar with Wonder Man. And his eyes sometimes glow red. Uh, Trisha says, Grace, I think Marvel is back and possibly better than ever with Black Panther 2 and Deadpool and Secret Wars and Kang. Yep, this is a, they have some pretty good stuff coming up. Pretty good stuff, I have to say. Now, uh, you have to wonder, will they have the West Coast Avengers on this show? And if they do, well, then what the heck is Vision Quest going to be about? Isn't that exactly the same thing? How on earth... Uh, oh, Matt, Matt, Matt gifted another five memberships. That's so kind of you, Matt. I think someone said you have to turn on gifts to be able to receive a membership. But that's very kind of you, Matt. So uh, if, I don't know how they can do West Coast Avengers here and then still do a Vision Quest show. Now, I'm starting to think this might be like She-Hulk. I'm thinking She-Hulk. I think it's going to be a comedy about Hollywood in Los Angeles. So, hey, maybe. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Matt. So maybe She-Hulk will show up because we're building out the Los Angeles corner of the MCU right now. And also, they're going to bring up a lot of comedy characters. Trevor Slatterly has already been confirmed for this. Ben Kingsley's character from Sean chi You know, Daniel Destin, Destin Daniel Cretton, who I'm a big fan of and I have a lot of faith in, this was his idea. Perhaps it stemmed from doing the Trevor Slatterly stuff. And he couldn't do a Trevor Slattery show, so he did the next best thing. But yes, that's right, Nadim. Uh, Ralph Boner is also in talks to return for this show as well. So you'd have a lot of Marvel actors. Uh, and so I think, hey, Yodi, welcome. So I think that you would have like, I haven't heard anything about a Young Avengers show, Max, but they must have a Young Avengers something coming up because they have all the Young Avengers showing up. I'll make a video about that after Black Panther 2. All right, so anyway, yeah, I think that this just seems, you know, like very she hulky And I think that means it'll probably be, you know, People will like it to some degree. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II is very funny, I believe. Marduk, I've seen him do some stuff. I think he's very talented. I think he's funny. I think he has a great persona. And I think they're going to do a commentary on blockbuster movies. I think that's what it's going to be. So I hope it's good, and I hope it's funny. Although I would bring the budget down a lot, significantly. I would bring it to a low-budget show. Uh, and let's, it, would, it, would, it, has to, it has a comedy team writing it. And I hope it's really funny. It's going to need to be really funny for this to work. Uh, so yeah, so I'm glad Yahya Abdul-Mateen II is getting paid for it. And I wonder how Warner Brothers feels that he is, uh, that he, he's doing this. Yeah, maybe they could, Juan, maybe they could do a Rogers the Musical joke. Maybe Ralph Boner was in the touring company or something like that. <laughs> that would be funny. That would really work. Uh, I can't imagine Wanda and Vision wouldn't show up here in some capacity, uh, but, you know, I think Vision Quest is now coming. So that really kind of makes you feel maybe you're not quite sure how they're going to organize it. Uh, Dimitri, yes, Vision is supposed to have Wonder Man's brainwaves, but in the MCU, he has Ultron's brainwaves. So maybe they'll fix White Vision by giving him, you know, Wonder Man's brainwaves now. I don't know. You know, with you, when you bring in race to the conversation... 
I think it makes things a little more complex. Look at how House of the Dragon has had some complications by having House of Valerian turn into a, um, a, a black family and then having the, the situation with Vaymond being like, you're taking my ancestral home away from my family and giving it to this white kid who's clearly not at all related to me. So I feel like it could be difficult in the going forward if Paul Bettany's walking around with Yahya Abdul-Mateen's brainwaves. <laughs> Like, what? I don't know how this is going to work. But Yaya is very funny. Very funny. And also, I think, really comes across as an actor. You know, he has that physicality to him. I think he could be really funny. I think he could do a great job. That is a little bit like Get Out, Marco. That's funny. Maybe they'll make a Get Out joke. But I don't know how much Jordan Peele would appreciate that. <laughs> because he would be like, I don't really feel like my thing was supposed to be used for Marvel comedy. Uh, all right, so that's the second story of the day. So that's two Marvel Wanda-centric castings. Let's head over to D.C. Let's head over to D.C. All right, so third story of the day. Boom, baby! It was announced, actually during yesterday's live stream, that they have found their Sophia Falcone. Trisha, did you put another super chat in? Oh, yes. Grace, on the topic of Marvel, what's going on with Disney and Sony for Spider-Man? Trisha, I just tweeted about that yesterday, and I said that... Um, they're about to have a new Sony Disney deal signed so they can move ahead with more Spider-Man movies. Uh, and then once that deal is signed, Tom Holland's deal can be put in place. And then I hear that they're going to put uh, Spider-Man 4 is going to be fast-tracked and that Marvel would like to have Spider-Man in both the upcoming Avengers movies. All right, so back to, um, uh, back to Sophia Falcone. So it was announced yesterday that the Penguin Show has founded Sophia Falcone. They're going to be focusing a lot on... Um, the mob portion of Gotham, as Penguin rises to power. Now, in the comics, you can see that Sophia Falcone in the comics down below, she is supposed to be huge, a behemoth like Gwendolyn Christie, or as some of you said, Gina Carano in Better Days. Uh, you know, before her controversy, Gina Carano would have been good casting on this role, quite frankly. Uh, but you needed someone very big. The whole point of two of the Falcone children was that even though Carmine Falcone was very against the crazies that were coming to Gotham, two of his children actually were very Arkham-esque. Sophia Falcone, who was, was just absolutely gigantic. And then all, uh, I think her, actually her last name was Sophia Gigante. Uh, cause she had married another, uh, you know, uh, mob guy who that was his last name. Uh, and then also, uh, his other child, Alberto, was like a Riddler-esque kind of creepy waif kind of character. So, yeah. So, I think that, you know, Sophia Falcone was a very cool character. And if you watch the, um, the Long Halloween animated two-part movie recently, her character did show up there and was comics accurate. This, though, seems to be drawing from the Crystal Reed version of the character on the Gotham television show, which, I gotta say... I did not appreciate because it was also not comics accurate. As good a job as she did and she looked gorgeous, didn't matter. To me, it wasn't Sophia Falcone. And I, I feel like, you know, I'm not a big fan of, I mean, it was such an interesting, cool version of a character, a female character, that, you know, it's a shame to see it go away. However, I will say that Kristen uh, Milioti does look very similar to jo John Turturro, who played Carmine Falcone in the movie, and also Zoe Kravitz, who would be her half-sister. Speaking of Zoe Kravitz and Selena Kyle, uh, I think it would really benefit this show if Selena Kyle were to come back from Bluthaven and show up here. Because I don't understand how they can do a whole show based on just the mob to make this interesting. Uh, I think that it seems a little short-sighted. Why would you have separate Mob and Arkham shows instead of one show which showed the power divide in Gotham City between the Mob and the new, you know, the new super criminals that were showing up because of Batman? Instead, to me, this just seems like a comic book succession, right? But yet on the same network that airs succession. Oh, Green Lantern's Light gifted another five memberships. Thank you. Hey, Alexander, thanks for joining. So, yeah, I mean, that is the show Gotham. That's right. And that's another problem. That's going to haunt this show, no matter what they do. You're going to be like, but we already had Gotham, which explored all of this. And I have to tell you, Gotham was the Fox Network television version of this. I'm talking about prestige television, where they could maybe do a little bit of a deeper dive and be more sophisticated. Zister, uh, Zister's still on the Wiccan High. I love it. 
So I'm just confused as to how this is going to work and how it's going to be competitive in the streaming space. And I liked Gotham until I think it, got, it went a little too far. I never liked the No Man's Land story, and I thought that hurt Gotham eventually. But Gotham actually was a pretty good show. Uh, and so I don't understand how this is going to be that different. <laughs> I'm nervous. And I have to say, no disrespect to Kristen Milioti, who I think is a very good actress. She, of course, rose to fame in the USS Callister Black Mirror episode, which I have a picture of there. And do you know who that African-American, well, she's actually English, so the black woman is there in the red? That's Michaela Cole. I did not realize that Michaela Cole was in that episode. That's incredible. And so one has to wonder, when is Jesse Plemons going to join a Marvel or DC movie? Uh, so that's, that's uh, I think that was, a, and she's also from Palm Springs. That's right. The and, um, Andy Samberg movie, which was okay. So, I mean, we'll see how this goes. I think she looks like, she looks nothing like the comic book character, but she does look like John Turturro and Zoe Kravitz. So I guess, I don't know. I mean, I still don't think it's a great idea. I think it's not particularly interesting. If you're not going to make this interesting, then how is it not just succession, but with comic book characters? And to me, that seems not, I don't think you can win against succession. There is no way with its third showrunner that this show is going to be as good as succession. It would just be impossible. So what are we doing here? But, you know, I'm glad she got work, and I certainly will watch and probably cover the show. I hope it doesn't become another Andor, where it's comic book, it's, it's, where it's associated with a huge brand, but yet there's just nothing for any of us to talk about. They're not, Bones, some people were like, maybe they'll put prosthetics on Kristen Milioti. Well, I can put her on huge stilts? She's 5'2". I mean, I just think that would not work. Uh, and you, I mean, you know what that would do to the budget of the cast? If everybody had to be in that much, I just think that would be crazy. But, I mean, let's see. Let's see what they decide to do. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. That's our casting roundup for Tuesday. It's 2.58. You can ask me anything you'd like until 3.08. And then I got to work on my DC video. Uh, Vicente says, Grace, have you heard anything about Hulkling and Secret Invasion, or are they going to try and make Scar into Hulkling, which I would hate? Um, with this such good casting for Wiccan, I would be surprised if they messed up with Hulkling on the other side of that. Uh, let's see. It sounds to me like maybe Hulkling will just debut in this Agatha show. Uh, cause you know, there could be scrolls everywhere, you know, but let's, so let's see what they decide to do. I have not... I mean, that was a theory that a lot of us had about uh, Secret Invasion, but I have not had any confirmation about that. Uh, and I think it would have leaked by now because that show is pretty much ready to go. Anthony Post says, if Ryan Coogler directs Secret Wars, what does that mean for Black Panther 3? Having seen Wakanda forever, is it necessary to complete a trilogy? Having seen Black Panther 2, I can tell you that Black Panther as a trilogy could benefit from some time passage. It could benefit from some time passage at this point. Uh, Welm says, uh, as I understand it, interviews discuss questions that cannot be asked during a recorded interview. Is it possible that Cavill s stipulates that he not be asked if he's... Oh, why is no one specifically asked Henry Cavill if he's, um, if he's gotten a contract? Well, because you're so happy that he did the interview that you're not going to put him on the spot like that. I mean, I think that's probably why the, uh, the, what the case is so far. Trisha says, Grace, did you see how you can now purchase merch from your favorites? Yes, I did. Uh, I did get that Disney Plus email, but I didn't like any of the merch. I was like, I'm not a fan of any of this. I don't need this. I'm good. But I did click on it. Thanks, Omar. That's very nice of you. Uh, let's see here. Edit and Geek says, Grace, are you going to get tickets for Taylor Swift's new tour? No, I'm afraid not. I did spring for Back to the Future musical tickets, though. Hey, Preston M., uh, Green Lantern's Light. I want Kit Connor to play Hulkling. Sorry, Heartstopper is a show. Hey, Preston. Welcome back. Hey, Victoria. Uh, let's see here. Anton, I just gave you a ton of Marvel tea. The Spider-Man stuff on top of all of it? Robbie says, back to Wiccan. Do you think they will focus on him finding Wanda like in Children's Crusade? Does Mephisto have Wanda like Doom? Will Joe play Tommy, too, as they're supposed to be identical? That would be fascinating. What a coup! What a coup uh, for uh, Joe Locke, if that were true. Uh, I have not heard anything about that. I don't think they're identical twins, though, because they weren't played by the same actor in the show so on WandaVision and M Multiverse of Madness so far. Ah, that's very sweet of you, Kruno. Um, I don't know if Mephisto has Wanda. I think it's more likely... Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. 
Jewel says, I want Vision and Wanda back together. Me too, Jewel. They're a great couple. Let's see here. Toon Dude says, what will be the Young Avengers lineup? Oh, I can't talk about it until you see Black Panther 2. Uh, Jerome, I'm making a video about suggestions for DC Studios. Oh, I already filmed it. I just have to edit it. Let's see here. Oh, hey, Randolph G. Is that really your name? Okay, so this question is probably premature, but since you already have watched Wanda or Wakanda forever, what does the future in the MCU look like for Namor or Namor? Um, I can't comment on that without spoilers. I'm sorry, but it looks good. Trisha Monger says, could Doom be an Ant-Man 3? Uh, no, that's all. That's the Kang show. A lot of Kang, a lot of MODOK. Let's see here. Dane, I haven't started Wednesday yet. Yesterday was Halloween, and I'm still working my way through the crown, whose embargo lifts on Saturday. Uh, thanks, Felix. Um... Oh, Heidi says, I just hope Wanda is just stuck in some realm rather than crazy and be married to some guy when we find her again. Uh, you want that to be the case? I just want her to stop being crazy. I really like, you know, she's got some problems. That's true. But I like the agency that she had in WandaVision instead, that she was dealing with grief and, you know, and it was hard. It was hard for her. I did like the line about, you know, what was fair and what wasn't fair. Um, hey, Matthew Rivera. Welcome. Let's see here. It's Zante. I, it was good. I mean, I'd already seen Hocus Pocus 2. I watched that last night. My parents thought it was okay. Uh, I think, you know, it's tough to find Halloween stuff to watch because they don't come out with enough of it every year. And the cu Cabinet of Curiosity was, was way too disturbing for me. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it was fine. I do think it was better than the first movie, as I said in my review. Uh, Jonathan says, hi, Grace. Greetings from Panama. Longtime BTT viewer. I was gifted a membership from Cool Guy. Oh, that's great, Jonathan. I'm glad you're using it. Uh, hey, Marvin. Hey, LJ. Thanks for joining. Uh, Lewis, I haven't heard anything about Wicked casting beyond, you know, like the, the big Jeff Goldblum headline the other day. Trisha says, Grace, do you think the Santa Claus show will be like, uh, will be big like Hocus Pocus 2? I know people who are very excited about the Santa Claus show. And I, of course, do really like the first Santa Claus movie. I thought they got progressively worse after that, but I'm going to watch it. It starts before Thanksgiving, which I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, Denzel, I'm glad you're excited for that. Oh, that's right, Mika. Tomorrow is Avatar Day. I'll be reacting. I'll be breaking it down. And I'll be live streaming. What a day. Uh, Generation Marvel says, any news on Captain America 4 with Thunderbolt Ross? I've written those videos out. I wanted to make them after I saw Black Panther, so I will make them hopefully late this week. Writer, and also I just got more tea on Secret Wars, so I can put that in. Uh, Writer Boy says, what can we get, uh, can we get, uh, what can we do to get Kiki as Rogue? I need this. Uh, just keep tweeting about it, I guess. You know, somebody told, somebody said that it was like, kind of like a fan casting, like John Krasinski. So maybe if you can't even get her as like the de facto regular Rogue, maybe she could be a variant in some capacity at some point. Felix says, Grace, worried that Joe Locke might not be, not, might not be Wiccan? Personally excited, but keeping my expectations low after a few Marvel disappointments lately. Also, would that mean Quicksilver and Speed show up? I don't know about Quicksilver, but Speed would probably have to be there. Um, I can't guarantee you that he's Wiccan, but uh, Kevin Feige's not stupid, and fandom would just absolutely erupt in, in horror and anger if he wasn't Wiccan. So, I mean, does he want another Ralph Boner situation? You know, I don't know if that would be good. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Zhao. Thank you, Corey. Although I see you retracted your message. Jander says, is the new season of The Crown as good as usual? It's incredible. I was like, I don't know if this show is going to be as good. And I was like, it's just as good as ever. Will I be making weekly videos on The Last of Us? Mm, uh, well, Pinhead Larry, I do not play video games. So I'm not quite sure what I would cover week to week on that kind of a show. Let's see how hot it is. Right now, it's not that hot as a trailer. Like, people are certainly paying attention to it. But I think it might be more White Lotus or Chernobyl than like House of the Dragon, or maybe more Succession. Like everyone tweets about it, but I don't know if it's something that really needs to be covered. Corey says, any word on Catherine O'Hara and Amy Poehler joining Agatha as well? I haven't heard anything about that. 
Max has just watched X and Mia Goth is so talented. Where do you think we could see her in the MCU? I think she could make an interesting mystique. Well, she's a very interesting character. She's, of course, you know, has a child, I believe, and is married to Shia LaBeouf. She does some crazy, zany stuff, and I don't really know how mainstream that she is. So maybe you could see her there someday. But, you know, Anya Taylor-Joy, who Danny is bringing up, I think people would go with her before they went with Mia Goth. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy is Harley Quinn or Black Cat, Danny. I would like either of them. Ethan says, hi, Grace. I'm currently sick in bed. Oh, no. I'm so sorry you're sick. Any movie or TV show suggestions? Oh, uh, if you haven't watched The Watcher, that's a fabulous binge. I would highly recommend that. The New White Lotus is, is, is pretty steamy stuff. Uh, that's good. Uh, I just says, what are your thoughts on Indira Varma and Emily Watson being attached to Dune's sisterhood? I think that that's an incredible cast. And if they can turn Dune into a franchise, I will be really impressed. I will be really impressed. Uh, Anthony says, any tea on Orville season four renewal? I have not heard anything about that. I'm sorry. Danny says, Grace, are you becoming an Avatar stan? I wouldn't go that far, but I'm open to being into Avatar. I'm not against it. I'm not really against anything. People like to pretend that I have these grudges and I'm upset about stuff. I like a good party and a good time. Let's see here. Uh, thoughts on Nate Moore confirming the Eternals return? Calvin, I'll believe it when I see it. And in what capacity? I mean, he produced that movie. Of course he's going to say they're good. It's like Ryan Johnson's still making a Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, right. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, sure. Steven says, if they introduce Wonder Man for Wanda, do you think they will also introduce Vision's other love interest family in his show? That would be great, Steven. That's a great suggestion. You might be like, who else did Vision have a relationship with? Well, Tom King, the comic book that made him famous, and then he went on to make himself infamous with his Batman Catwoman situation. But anyway, he wrote a show where Vision had an entire robot family, just like himself, and it was really good. That could be for Vision Quest. You're right, Steven. That would be great to see on the show like that. And Vision, speaking of young Avengers, Vision has his own uh, children, particularly a daughter, that kind of became members of that group. Caleb says, who is your favorite young Avenger from the comics? Wiccan, hands down. Uh, edit, editing Geek says, have you been to the Butterbeer Bar in New York City? I have, and I got some Butterbeer, even though I don't like Butterbeer. But I fail one in Rome, you know? Juan says, don't you think that the Eternals could be great guest stars, at least? The return of Macari, Angelina Jolie, or Harry Styles would really help bring interest to certain projects. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Paul says, did you see the $20 per month on Twitter now? Well, now it's down to $8, apparently. Uh, which is great. But I, I, my real problem is that anyone can buy it. I really feel there should be different levels of verification, you know, for people who are news sources that are verified and for just people who are paying. Uh, if anyone can, I mean, I'll be on, I'll ride Twitter down to the bottom, you know, uh, but I, I think I might be watching it go down. Uh, Antonio says, will there be a major MCU time jump for Coven of Chaos? Well, no, remember, Antonio, those twins just spontaneously age up. So they don't have to do that. Devin says, uh, and they could be from a different universe now. Devin says, any idea when the Young Avengers will unite in the MCU? I'm afraid I do not know a timetable for that. Uh, C. Lee T. says, Kiki Palmer and Florence Pugh in a remake of Thelma and Louise. Uh, I don't think that's good for them, quite frankly. But I applaud your enthusiasm. Uh, Omar says, I started watching Succession because you mentioned it a few times in your videos and I love it so much. Ah, oh, it's my pleasure. Welcome to the party. Speaking of a party, Mandela Butterfly says, will they bring in Jocasta, maybe an Ironheart? Ultron is coming back, right? Ah, uh, well, yeah, they're, they're doing some stuff with Ultron. They just have that other guy do the voice. Um, I don't know about Jocasta. That's an interesting idea. Oh, it's past 3.08 at Zante. Oh, you didn't have to pay to tell me that. That's very nice of you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's three. Oh, it's 310. I better get on that DC video. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. Green Lantern's Light. Uh, I don't really think I can make that video because I know who they're actually considering, and then I would get in trouble. Uh, I hope to, they'll be announcing it soon, though, and we can actually discuss it. But anyway, I had a love. Oh, Danny, I can't. Okay, quick shout outs. We'll do like two minutes of shout outs. All right. Who, what, are you, what are you guys up to? What's going on just so I can say hi? 
Juan, that was a great recommendation. Thank you. Bye, Victoria. Hey, Denzel. Bye, Gramos. Hey, Zist Oh, Zister, you got sick from Halloween. I'm sorry to hear it. Hey, Antonio. Uh, hey, Caleb. Uh, Danny's doing nothing in Chicago. I love it. Millie Joe says, I made it. Got back from a work meeting. Oh, we're just ending. I'm sorry. Oh, Heidi, I'm so glad you're enjoying your membership. Victoria's eating some mac and cheese on a day off. That sounds fantastic. Anthony says, in the UK, appreciating you. Oh, I appreciate you, Anthony. Oh, hey, Cosmic, eating noodles for lunch. Dana O'Leary says, missed my premium chat. Here we go. Any truth to Mephisto and Ironheart? Not answering that. Uh, I don't, I don't want to blatantly spoil stuff for you guys. Uh, LJ Harris says, Grace, my husband and I religiously watch your videos, and it always gives us something to talk about. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. Hi to you and your husband. Uh, Keith says, watching Friends with my roommates. Great show. Sa Silent Jack says, have a great day. Pizza for dinner tonight. Mm, delicious. Chris Kahn says, eating tacos in Germany. I love it. Uh, Gramos says, I'll Twitter follow you to the end too. Thanks, Gramos. <laughs> We're going to just ride this thing all the way down. Uh, Omar's going to try the watcher tonight. Oh, you'll really enjoy it, I think. Max Kiddo says, cleaning my bathroom while listening to the stream. Awesome. Way to multitask. Craig Puckett says, having count chocula cereal in Houston. Oh, I love it. Uh, Jennifer says, my sister and I are listening while uh, sitting in traffic in Nigeria. Jennifer, it's always so great to see you across the globe. So hi to my, your sister. Hello to your sister. Uh, Leo says, hi, Grace. I think cast and kit would be a no-brainer with Marvel. Not only do we know they have fantastic chemistry together, but an established fan, fan base. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I've been saying it for months. So yes, I do agree with that idea. And I'm really glad. I think it, it, it would be such a coup for Faye. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. I had a great time talking to you as always. Bye. Bye, everybody.